All right, folks, welcome back to the EAL Course Vlogs. This is the first in the two-parter from Bandon Trails. Bandon Trails is the ultimate sleeper at the Bandon Dunes Resort. The only course without direct coastline, the first tee of trails rests on a massive sand dune just to remind you where you are. And on the other side of all of the courses here, about to head out into the wilderness, it kind of feels like Lord of the Rings. You plunge after the first tee into the inland meadow and the coastal forest. Corin Crenshaw designed Bandon Trails in 2005, making it the resort's third course, and definitively its most unique. The course offers a wealth of opportunities to hit shots you're comfortable with and to make it to the hole your own way. Ultimately, Trails rewards thoughtful strategy from players and can brutally punish you for wandering offline. Caddies often consider this course their favorite. It's a bit more of a player's course, and it's one hell of a hike. The fairways are wide enough to give you some room, but ultimately, the undulations surrounding the greens will puzzle even the best of us. So let's get this underway, folks. Bandon Trails, we're teeing it up on the green tees again, which measure out to 62.49. First hole, 356. You can see the green kind of around there on the left. And here, you're basically looking to drop it into that little valley by the two bushes, kind of left center of the fairway. Four iron in my hands, very comfortable with this tee shot. I love that all of the opening holes at Bandon Dunes, all of the courses start you off with what an architect refers to as a gentle handshake. Pretty nice high draw here with the four iron downwind. Pick that tee up and let's get this round underway, folks. Got 93 yards into the flag but I'm not gonna hit my 58 degree, which is definitely what I usually hit from this yardage. With the elevation and the pin being in the front, I'm going to hit a 54 degree, which I'm gonna to try to just hit the cleanest 54 degree from this uphill lie and uh, just try to get a green in regulation to get going here. A Little long, but feeling good about this. And the greens here were some, again, some of the nicest greens on the property. A uh, little kick in par there with a downhill two putt. Second hole, straight into ace cam. Green tees are 166. Today it's playing 199. So I might be on the wrong tee box, folks. But either way, downhill, downwind, I've got a seven iron in my hands. I'm thinking cut. The pin is tucked there on the right, and there's a big bunker there. So just trying to take a soft, easy swing. Kind of cut a little too much and ended up with a funky, funky lie in this bunker about pin high. And really here, this is not a shot I practice a lot. So very happy to uh, escape the jaws oh, yeah. over here. <laughs> Still working on judging the pace. Uh, not too disappointed with this par leave here. Just kind of cruise it in there for bogey. Yeah. Oh, good stroke. Third hole. Nice. Welcome to golf. You've got a par four, a par three, and a par five. And this is a big one, folks. And this gives you an idea of what trails is all about. Just taking you back into the wilderness. It's such a really, really cool layout. Very, very cool. Can I say it three times? It's really cool, guys. 532. Bunker out there. I'm just trying to basically take a draw off that bunker and cut it out a little bit. Pencil out of the air. Didn't even notice. Ended up hitting a bit of a cut, but it worked for me. Yeah, so the pin is 237 here, but with the downwind and with this big green, I'm looking at four iron. Usually, I, maybe I can squeeze 210 out of it, and I'm just thinking you can kind of see the pin there um, right over the crest of the hill, the red flag. Uh, there's a lot of room on the right, so I'm just starting it right and thinking draw. Man, I caught this four iron, one of the flushest four irons I've ever hit, and just got on to the front right edge of the green. It was pretty much a straight shot. It didn't draw very much. And eagle putt told myself I'm not going to leave it short. And wow, loving trails right Lovely. now. Tap in birdie puts me back at even par. Even. Fourth hole. This hole is like a lot of these holes at trails where it's just kind of a mystery, but it's so big. It's really a fascinating golf course. Five wood off of the tee here on the fourth hole, 365. 
I am basically looking at that stripe on the fairway there with a bit of a draw. The hole is tucked very deep on the right there. I uh, basically come over the top there and just did a little pull draw and, uh, you know, found myself in a very strange location. This ball is really um, not not a lot of not a lot of backswing available, and the stance is very strange. So with a six iron in my hands, I'm just trying to cover the last uh, 130 uphill into the uh, into the wind here, and really just trying to get this six iron somewhere near the green. Honestly, this to me is one of these shots that just gets me excited, you know, and I'm so happy to be in a chance here to chip this close. Um, unfortunately, I uh, flubbed this chip, which just kind of happens to me. Terrible. It's embarrassing to watch this shot, and I, I probably should just delete this file. But now I have a chance to chip again, and I'm not going to use the same club. <laughs> so... Putter in my hands. I've got a uh, probably 50 feet for par uh, over the river and through the woods. I feel like it's going a little left, and it goes more left than I thought to a degree that was pretty Great intense. Putt, so bogey putt yeah. on the way. Not too long, but come on. Long enough to make me uncomfortable. Yeah. But we made it. Amazing. Already in love with trails. Back to one over. Fifth know. hole. Ace, Ace cam is live, folks. The pin is in the back. I've got 121. The plates say 124. Um, now, this pin's in the back, and I uh, don't want to go too long, though. And with this crosswind, I basically grab this sort of shutdown pitching wedge, and um, I caught it pretty heavy, if I'm being totally honest. And um, basically didn't quite get up the hill, but that's good because there's only about seven feet past the flag, and it's racing down quick. So... Saw some more break there than was actually there. Kind of one of the dreams of my life is that everything breaks more than it does. Um, this is a scary putt. This is a probably four and a half footer that drops off into no man's land and just got to kind of try to yeah, summon man. some confidence there to just get that ball to go on the line that you want it to go on and just figure that the hole is big, I guess. Jordan Spieth said Gaffer. when he's in the zone, the hole just looks bigger than it is. I don't know what that feels like, to be honest with you. Moving on to the sixth hole, 359, par four, and uh, the pin is just left of that big bunker there. I was really examining the cor the yardage book here and just trying to play for the fat part of the fairway. Corin Crenshaw do a really good job of giving you a place to land the ball. And I really try not to hit driver on every tee if I don't have to. So here to cover that green, I've got 220 into the wind. So gapper for me is 230. Um, you know, in hindsight, maybe five wood would have been a better play. But luckily the gapper just skirted disaster there the bunker is just on the left made it over the hill though and i get a view of the green from here i've got 141 with a nine iron in my hands I'm trying to stretch it out because the old back is feeling kind of tight like some crispy toast looks like i aimed a little bit further left than i thought i was and maybe that's why i ended up front left of the green Still luckily right it didn't go in the bunker almost pin high And going with the putter here after that tragic flub on the, um, you know, the hole ago. Tap in par. A little walk through the woods. This is like a fairy tale. Trails is such a magical course. And onto the seventh hole. This is a monster. From the back tees, it's 440. From the greens here, it's 406. And basically, um, you have a tremendous climb up to this green. And just to the right is actually the turn stand where you can get the wonderful little, like, these sort of, like, uh, date balls or, like, power balls, they call them. And there's the best little snack that Bandit Dunes ever had. I think they're, like, three bucks a piece. It's, like, $1.50 a bite. Totally worth it. Yeah. Hit the absolute piss out of this drive. Felt really good about it. I think uh, look, checking the club face to make sure I didn't break it. Vice ball, you know, you never know. So we've got um, 112 to this pin. Uphill downwind, just trying to take this easy pitching wedge swing 
And, uh, you know, just I'm looking long and right here with this pitching wedge. Yes. 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 All right, birdie putt here coming back eight feet. Again, I just feel like this is a great read, but I don't know. I either pushed it or just hit a terrible putt. Could be a combination of both. Walk away with a tap in par. This, to me, if you wonder that I have a great swing and why my scores are so terrible, it's because I get on the green in two and then three putt or can't chip. These are the things I can't wait to work on when this trip is over. Eighth hole, 299 little crosswind hopefully it holds up the draw didn't really want to hit the driver if i'm being totally honest i wanted to stick to the plan that i already had which would have been four iron wedge anyway cool. curl this thing over like a cinnamon bun and i've got a super awkward chip from 60 yards out with the uh with the old sand wedge here hit a terrible shot really just all my confidence around the green here is just totally lost. The ball is sitting on this kind of sandy, sandy, like it's like whipped cream almost with grass growing out of it and I catch it super heavy. And now I have more work to do. Really thinking of Joel Dahman's podcast where he's talking to me about two chips. And um, I am basically old EAL two chips here. Tragic, terrible, terrifying. I need to go to Jim McLean's short game school. And I'm basically just on the edge of the bunker there. And on my way to my first double bogey of the round, which would come on the eighth hole. Not too shabby. This putt obviously doesn't go in because it doesn't even get near the hole. And that hurt. It's funny because a double bogey doesn't hurt after coming off of a triple bogey. But it really hurts when you're coming off of what was shaping up for me to be a pretty good round. Um, one over on the uh, on the eighth was feeling pretty good. Ninth hole, big par five, 522 from the greens, 567 from the blacks. And here, um, after coming off of a bad swing on the previous hole, I summon my swing thought here, folks, which is Rory McIlroy. I just try to have tempo, timing, and space, and I really try to over-visualize the tee shot. Um, looking at the left edge of that bunker on the right and just hit a monster drive. Here I had 199 in with a six iron, so that was a 323-yard drive. I'm not sure how they measure golf holes, but that was a good drive. Six iron in my hands, pins right front center there. Feeling really good about this six iron. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, grabbed the six iron and something happened there where I just shanked it. And would you believe it? It hit a tree square in the face and threw it right back in the middle of the fairway, which sort of feels like, okay, I deserve that because that ball was gone. I don't even know the ruling. Now I got my favorite number, 90 yards on the nose, 58 degree, slowing it down. And I hit this one pretty close, oh, so I actually have a birdie putt. Great shot. Ways to make a four. <laughs> but again, I'm a lip guy. A lot of lip service. No hole. Tragic end to the front nine, abandoned trails, where I only walked away at three over, but it certainly felt like more when you put yourself in opportunities where you feel like you know, that one bad shot, whether it's the flub chip or a lip out putt or, you know, another flub chip or whatever it is. But ultimately, that's golf and it's all relative. And no matter who we are, we will always feel like we could have played better. I'm sure Tiger Woods, well, he probably doesn't care that he didn't par 18 of the Masters, but you get what I'm saying. There's always room for golf to ultimately catch up to you. And that's why I think we're in love with this game forever. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. Stay tuned for the back nine abandoned trails where there are some interesting holes. There's a short par three that, that I didn't make a par on. And I feel like if you like train wrecks, you're going to like me on the 17th hole here. But anyway, moving on. Stay tuned for the back nine abandoned trails where we will have a cold start and a lukewarm finish. <laughs>